Today's course will cover OMRI approved or organic pesticides that are used within organic fruit and vegetable production. My name is Grant McCarty and I'm a local foods and small farms educator serving Joe Davis, Stevenson, and Winnebago counties. These are today's objectives for OMRI approved pesticides. After today's session, you should be able to understand what an OMRI approved pesticide is and the way they are approved. You should also be able to understand where pesticides fit within organic fruit and vegetable production. You'll also become aware of OMRI pesticides that are available, how the product works, and how the product is applied, and what the product ultimately targets. We've broken up today's lecture into three sections. In the first section, we'll look at how OMRI pesticides are defined, precautions to consider when using them, and the role of pesticides within organic production. Following this, we'll look at the general types of insecticides and fungicides, bactericides. Both sections will provide a greater overview of what is available, how they work, and what they ultimately target. With, this is the official definition of what an organic pesticide is. In essence, an organic pesticide can be either synthetic, also known as man-made, or non-synthetic, also known as naturally occurring, that's approved by the National Organic Standards Board. It is important to note that some non-synthetic substances are not allowed within organic production. These products are those which would be harmful to human health and or the environment. They may also not follow the organic standards and practices that are in place. If a synthetic product is allowed for organic production, it must abide by these rules. It is produced from a naturally occurring source or there is no organic substitute. It has no adverse effect on the environment in use, disposal, and manufacturing. Nutritional quality must also not be adversely affected and it must be recognized as safe by FDA with no residue of heavy metals or other contaminants. The approved pesticide is what we commonly think of as used in organic production. It stands for the Organic Materials Review Institute, which gives the approval. They are a nonprofit where companies will submit pesticides and other products that they would like to market to organic producers. The product is then taken through testing to make sure what the company says it does, it actually does, while also upholding to the organic standards. If it's cleared by OMRI, it is given this logo pictured here, and then potentially allowed to be used in organic production. Here we have the OMRI approved neem oil pesticide. You can also see that an OMRI approved pesticide does not look any different than a pesticide that isn't OMRI labeled. It still must list its active ingredients, its registration number, and additional cautions that must be taken. If you were to look at the back of this neem oil bottle, you would also see the similar directions and cautions that you would if the product was conventional. Both OMRI approved and conventional pesticides look no different in their labeling, except for that OMRI listed seal. As we introduce these OMRI pesticides for organic production, there are a couple things you should keep in mind. Like any other pesticide, OMRI pesticides are still toxic. You should treat OMRI pesticides just like conventional pesticides. You should read the label, follow the directions, and be mindful of any type of personal protective equipment you will need. In addition, while an OMRI pesticide can be used in organic production, you must add it to your organic plan and must verify with your certifying agency before applying to your fields. Not all agencies will allow all OMRI approved pesticides, which is why it is important to talk with your certifying agency. At the same time, OMRI pesticides are still regulated. They are regulated in the same way as conventional pesticides are and must follow EPA laws, regulations, and state BPC Title VII and Title XXII laws, regulations. They must also follow worker protection standards when applied. Additionally, while no OMRI pesticide is restricted use at this time, there may be certain restrictions that will need to be followed if it is to be applied to the field. Here we have information on neem extract pesticide, which we saw laid before a derivation of a couple slides before. This is taken from the official OMRI website, and you can see here that the status of the chemical is that it can be used in production, but there are some restrictions in place as to how it can be used. Additionally, there is an NOP rule you would want to look up that may explain more about the restrictions that are in place on this pesticide. Some OMRI approved pesticides are added and removed each year. What you could use the previous year, you may not be able to use this year. While some stay on the OMRI approved list year after year, 
It's still important to make sure to contact your certifying agency when considering a pesticide to use. As we'll discuss in the next couple of slides, organic pesticides have an important role within organic production, and it's important to understand their role within an integrated pest management plan. This is taken from the official standards for organic production. If you decide to examine the OMRI approved list of pesticides, you will also see this paragraph above all the pesticides listed. The bolded words of physical and cultural has been added to this paragraph. The general idea is that in organic production, you should be utilizing additional practices that can control plant pathogens and insect pests before relying solely on the pesticides that are available to you within organic production. What we mean by physical and cultural practices, as mentioned on the previous slide, are these. Many of these practices you will already be doing as a certified organic production, such as cover cropping and crop rotation, but some of these additional practices can be incorporated within an integrated pest management plan. While not all of these can provide a solution for pest pressure, you may need to show your certifying agency that you took steps before and during your season to control insect pests and plant pathogens before they will allow you to utilize an OMRI pesticide. Before we get into the OMRI insecticides, these are the general categories that we have. As you will note, these are no different than conventional pesticides in their form. Granules, powders, are applied directly to the leaf tissue, the insect or pathogen, or may even be digested as a granule. Some powders may also need to be mixed with water to create a solution for application. Oils are another category of pesticides that are derived from plant leaf tissue, such as neem oil from the neem tree. Microbial populations are those bacteria and other microbes that can be used to address certain plant pathogens and some insects. Then liquids are the final category. Additionally, there may be some pesticides that are a combination of many of these different forms. You may also find a liquid form of a powder pesticide, for example. We now move in to the types of OMRI insecticides that are available. Surround, or kaolin clay, is a non-synthetic ground particle made from kaolin clay, which is a non-caking ingredient. It works by placing a sheath barrier on the plant itself, as you can see here in this picture, to keep insects from chewing on the leaf tissue. It may also act as an irritant on the insect pest. From this list, you can see that there are many insects that are infected by surround. For vegetable growers dealing with vine borer, cucumber beetles, and stink bugs on cucurbits, kale and clay has been used. Because this one can act as an irritant on the insect, you may want to apply this at first sign of damage or at flowering. This powder is also typically applied with water. Diatomaceous earth is also a powder. It is made of ground particles from diatoms, which are tiny aquatic organisms. The diatomaceous earth works by cutting incisions into the insects, and this further causes them to dry out. Because of this, it has broad spectrum, and it can affect many pests. Typically, you will apply diatomaceous earth at the first sign of damage or at flowering of the crop. In addition, you should be aware that this powder can also affect your pollinators, as the ground diatoms are very sharp in order to cut into insect pests. Neem oil, or neem soap, is a non-synthetic oil from the neem tree. It acts as an antifeedant for insect pests. Many beetles and true bugs are affected by neem, which includes Mexican bean beetle, Colorado potato beetle, squash, and stink bugs. Neem may also work for some aphids on both vegetables and fruit crops. Like other insecticides, neem must be applied in presence of insect pests. Neem also has a different percent variations available. Horticultural oils are derived from some stem and plant leaf tissues of select plants. Oils block the respiratory openings of the pest, which then causes suffocation. Horticultural oils primarily target smaller insects that are sedentary, which include aphids, overwintering aphid eggs, mite eggs, and scales. Garlic and hot pepper oils have been popular for controlling certain pest populations, although research shows that these are no different than what we might consider other plain horticultural oils. Rosemary and cinnamon oil may be more effective than other horticultural oils for some insects. Soaps are those that have been formulated to provide the best insect control but also have minimal damage to plants. In general, soaps break down the linings of the insect cuticle 
and then blocks out breathing of the insect. Because of this action of the soap, it mostly works for soft-bodied pests, such as aphids, mealybugs, mites, and whiteflies. Some examples of a soap include Imped and Safer's insecticidal soap. Bt, or Bacillus thuringiensis is a non-synthetic bacteria, so this is within the microbial category. Bt produces proteins, which must be eaten to make an opening in the insect guts. The primary target for Bt is Lepidopteran, or butterflies, moths, caterpillars, especially ones that will affect tomato and brassicas. Two examples of Bt are Dipel and Thuricide. Additionally, there are different strains available that can control different species. While we cannot use genetically engineered crops containing Bt, we can actually use the bacteria in organic production. One word of caution for Bt is that insects may develop resistance to the Bt strains and the proteins that are produced by Bt. Bavaria bassiana is a non-synthetic fungus that infects tissue by developing spores that land on the insect. The insect may also ingest plant tissue that contains these spores. Thrips, aphids, whiteflies, caterpillars, weevils, ants, Colorado potato beetle, and mealybugs have all shown some control when utilizing Bavaria bassiana. Some additional information is that the use of this fungus for control will depend largely on the environment for the spores to effectively land and to stick to the outer layer of the insect, which is why we stress multiple spraying may be more effective. Metarhysium anisopilae is a non-synthetic fungal spores that are used to infect susceptible insects through contact on foliage or in the soil. Pests include thrips, whiteflies, and mites on onions, peppers, and tomatoes. It should be applied when insects are present. An example of an available product is MET52. When this product is applied, the effectiveness of the spores will depend largely on the soil temperatures, and any extreme temperatures, such as being very hot or colder, will impact the effectiveness. Some insect viruses are available that target certain pests. If you choose to use one of these, you want to match the insect virus to the pest you want to target. This category of pesticide is typically called the bacleoviruses. They are within the genus Nucleopolyhedrovirus. The most common one is used to control codling moths on apples and other fruit. Examples of products that target codling moths are Sidex and Coprovirusin. Nematodes are non-synthetic microscopic roundworms within the Steiner nematidae and Heteroraptidae families. Populations are applied with water onto the soil. Because of that, these nematodes are only effective on pests that begin their life cycle in the soil or those that overwinter in the soil early on in the spring. Pests that have been controlled with nematodes include armyworms, boars, corn earworm, and corn rootworm. Examples of products that have been used to control these include Steiner Nema Carpo Capsae and Heterorhabditis bacteriophora. Some vital information for using nematodes is that they do require wet and moist soil conditions in order for the nematodes to move within the soil profile. Spinosad is a non-synthetic that is made from spinosin A and D that are produced by the fermentation of actinomyciate species and sacropolyspora spinosa. It works as a broad spectrum for many insects by being ingested or through direct contact. Further, it affects the nervous system that can cause motor loss, and the insect dies from exhaustion. Pests that are affected include caterpillars, beetles, thrips, flies, Colorado potato beetle, especially in its larval stage. Spinosad is poor, though, on true bugs. Because it needs direct contact or an ingestion, this pesticide must be applied when insects are present. An example of Spinosad is the brand Entrust. Pyrethrin or natural pyrethrins, is a non-synthetic insecticide that is produced from powdered African chrysanthemums, among other species. The insecticide paralyzes insects, which eventually leads to death. It works on pests such as true bugs, caterpillars, beetles, whiteflies, leapoffers, and cabbage loopers. It must be applied at the presence of the insect, as it needs to have direct contact with the insect. Some examples of pyrethrins include pyganic, concern, and azera. One important note on pyrethrins is that they do break down rapidly in the sunlight and their efficacy may be limited based on this. 
So we now are in the, our, the last section, which is the types of fungicide and bactericides that are available. Sulfur is a synthetic material that controls disease as a protectant from plant pathogens. It works by inhibiting spore germination and growth of fungal pathogens. Sulfur can target powdery mildew on many crops and brown rot on peaches. Sulfur is a preventative pesticide and must be applied before the appearance of the disease for the season. A word of caution with sulfur is that it may cause injury to some crops, as well as some varieties or cultivars of these crops may be more susceptible to this pesticide. Copper sulfate is a synthetic fungicide and bactericide that is applied as a spray solution. Copper ions of copper sulfate are absorbed by the spores of the fungus or bacterium. Through this absorption, it disrupts the protein functions that would have allowed for spore germination. Some examples include late blight, early blight, bacterial spot, and bacterial speck on tomato. Copper sulfate should also be applied before the appearance of the disease, if possible. When using this product, the National Organic Program stresses that you should be mindful of applying copper sulfate so that it prevents the ions from being accumulated into the soil. This may mean taking into account environmental conditions and a more precise spray schedule. In addition, copper sulfate has shown adverse effects on pollinators. Bordeaux mix combines copper sulfate with calcium hydroxide. This mix is typically used for downy and powdery mildew of grapes, fire blight and apple scab on apples, and foliar diseases of tomatoes. This pesticide should be applied in early spring with a diluted mixture applied first on the young foliage. At the same time, different rates may be needed throughout the season. It can also persist through some wet conditions. Bicarbonate is a synthetic white granular powder that is mixed with water then applied on the foliage. Through this, it acts as a protectant for certain foliar diseases. Some diseases that can potentially be controlled are powdery mildew on grapes, cucurbits, and brambles. This pesticide will need to be applied at first sign of disease. Example of products available include Caligran, Spectrum, and Army Carb. Army Carb especially for powdery mildew on grapes. Trichoderma is a non-synthetic fungicide that is made from fungal species found in many soils. It can be applied around the roots of a plant and induce plant defense responses that make plants more resistant to soil-borne pathogens. Some examples are Pythium, which causes white root rot, Fusarium, which causes wilt, and Rhizoctonia, which causes rot. Trichoderma must be applied whether on seeds, mixed in the soil, or added in the potty mix for seed starting. An example of a trichoderma product is root shield. One word of caution with trichoderma is that it can have varying effects on the soil-borne plant pathogens it is targeting. Streptomyces lodicus is a non-synthetic bacterium that is found in the soil. It works by colonizing the plant roots and foliage, where it then competes with other plant pathogens. The bacterium also produces antifungal compounds and enzymes that will digest the cell walls of plant pathogens. Streptomyces lodicus can be used as a seed treatment for pathogens that include Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, Pythium, Sclerotinia, and Verticillium. When applied on the foliage, it can target downy and powdery mildews, fire blight, alternaria, Sclerotinia, and Anthrocnus. Streptomyces lodicus should be used as a preventive pesticide and applied before disease is present. An example of a product available is Actinovate. Cuneotherum minitans is a fungus that has soulless spores that will attack the pathogens within the soil. Because it is applied to the soil, it will only target soil-borne plant pathogens. These can include Sclerotinia sclerotium, which causes white mold, and Sclerotinia minor, which causes soft rot and blight. Cuneotherum minitans is applied and incorporated into the top two inches of the soil before the transplants are planted. Because of the application, the effectiveness of conotherium minitans will depend on the soil temperature and the soil moisture. Subtilis is a bacterium in spore form that competes with other microorganisms and interferes with pathogen attachment and further spore dispersal. Pests that are targeted by Bacillus subtilis include verticillium. However, when Bacillus subtilis is combined with Streptomyces gerasifaciens, it can control root rot of cucumber and tomato. Bacillus subtilis is a preventative pesticide. 
and needs to be applied as seed treatment or into the soil. Some examples include the Bacillus subtilis strain QST713 and Serenade. Here are some additional resources that you may find useful. The Local Foods and Small Farms team has developed webinars that can be accessed from this address. There are two different webinars that address organic management of insects and disease. If you're interested in what other OMRI listed products are available, you can find them at this link. Cornell also has some great resources on organic disease management, as well as North Carolina State Center for Environmental Farming Systems. Additional information for insect viruses and nematodes can both be found at these addresses as well. Hopefully today, you've understood what an OMRI-approved pesticide is and its role within organic production. As shown, there are numerous products available that can control pest problems, especially if you have used other cultural and physical controls as preventions. As such, OMRI-approved pesticides should be cleared by a certifying agency before applying to your field and should also be combined with proper diagnosis of the insect and the pathogen. Prevention is always the key, though, when it comes to managing pests. To reach me, here is my contact information, gmccarty at illinois.edu and 815-235-4125.